Hello and welcome to this very cozy edition of Unearth Horticulture. I am keeping the fireplace going, I have coffee in hand, and there is no way I am going outside in negative 30 wind chill today for this episode. So the topic is staying indoors today, but I have a really good one and it has to do with climate pockets. Now most of the time when we're keeping a houseplant collection going or even just one houseplant, we want to think about the light levels a lot. We think about the exposures north, east, west, south, and we want to think about what kind of light, indirect, direct lighting, how much lighting, and that has to determine where we place our plants in our house. But a lot of the time we're not thinking about uh, two other important factors and they have to do more with the climate side of things, the temperature and the humidity level. So most of our house plants come from tropical regions where humidity levels are closer to 70% at times. So our houses, even on a normal basis in the summer, are closer to 40 to 50%. So even that's on a low side for some of these tropical plants. Now throw in the fact that it's winter, our air gets down closer to 20 to 30% humidity because of our heaters and how they work and our fireplaces. And then you have a huge climate difference that might be more inclined to stress your, your tropical house plants out. So today I'm going to take you on a brief little tour of my house and give you a couple of examples of climate pockets. So pockets of the house that are maybe uh, climates that you want to avoid for some species of plants and maybe some plants like it better. So I'm going to talk about how to find those pockets and hopefully your takeaway can be uh, that you're able to see more clearly where those pockets are in your house and you'll have all kinds of time to explore your homes this weekend uh, with the way the weather is outside. So let's take a look. So the first climate pocket we're going to talk about is the mantle or the fireplace. So I have the fireplace burning for the first time this winter yet and um, I actually have a pothos sitting here on the mantle. And the reason I have a pothos here is because this is actually a north facing room. So it's quite dark and this plant does really well. Pothos is the ultimate mantle place plant. So I encourage you to put your pothos here because they can tolerate this drier air created by the fire burning a lot better. But one thing to keep in mind is that with drier air comes an increased rate of transpiration. Transpiration is just the loss of water directly from the leaves of your plant. So if the plant is going through more water use, you might have to be checking the root zone, the soil uh, more frequently to make sure that you are keeping it uh, moist so that it doesn't dry out and get turned into a raisin. Um, so if you put a pothos or maybe a snake plant over by your fireplace, keep an eye on that. Now, those are two of the more adaptable plants to dry air, but uh, honestly, if you're moving away from tropical foliage, I encourage you to put arid plants, plants that are adapted to drier climates near the fireplace because they're gonna tolerate that, um, they're gonna tolerate that dry air better because they're adapted to it. So succulents, cacti, Christmas cactus, now, um, you're also gonna have to keep an eye on their water level as well because they're in containers. And if you don't have light that shines directly towards your fireplace, then that might be a no-go right away. But pothos tend to do okay with drier air. All right, on to the next climate pocket in my house. This is my kitchen window. And windows and windowsills are another climate pocket that you wanna watch out for because even though they have really great lighting, this is a south facing window, it's really great for all my succulents and succulent strings. Um, however, you have to be careful because in the winter, windows can get at least 10 degrees cooler than other areas of your house. So you need to make sure that your plants can deal with the cold. So plants like peperomias, for example, will not do as well on your window sills in the winter because they really hate temperatures below 60, 55 degrees. 
So that's something to keep an eye on. The other thing to keep in your brain is that if your plants are getting colder, they're gonna not put on new growth. They're gonna kind of slow their metabolisms down and be in a slower, almost dormant kind of state of growth. That doesn't mean you don't have to water them. It just means that uh, they're not gonna be putting on new growth as fast. So windowsills, great places for plants. Just keep an eye on the temperature. I wanted to talk about this uh, string of turtles really quick. This is actually a Peperomia prostrata is its common name. So it is a Peperomia that is surviving in my windowsill. I will mention that it has turned a little bit more dull in color. It looks a little bit more sad and not as perky as it normally does. And that is due to the temperature. I know that I'm keeping it well watered. It's got great lighting. It is just cold, just cold. All right, next climate pocket. This is a bigger climate pocket. This is my laundry room and it is the corner room in the house. Let me show you right here. And it actually, this is an older house and this laundry room didn't used to be closed in. So it is quite chilly. Uh, it does have its own wall heater unit. I'm trying to do the meteorologist pointing here. It has its own a uh, wall unit and you notice I don't have any plants in front of that wall unit and that is because it is extremely dehydrating to put plants in front of wall units directly in front of the fireplace or right by air vents. So make sure that you're putting plants only that can handle that dry air in front of them. In fact, I even put some succulents in front of this and it zapped those too. So this heater gets way too, it dries out plants way too much to put to put anything in front of it. So that's just something that you need to be aware of in your house. You might wanna try it out, try different climate pockets for different plants, but it might not always work out. So just keep an eye on it and be aware of that. The first group of plants that I like to keep in here are my hybrid Phalaenopsis orchids. And you can see here, there are some flower spikes, some new flower flowers that I'm training up here and the reason I like to keep these orchids in here is because their flowers are actually triggered to rebloom in cooler temperatures. So orchids need that temperature fluctuation to trigger their, trigger their flowers. And Phalaenopsis are known as the orchid that handles dry air the best. And so they're easiest to keep, keep alive in the winter months. So that's why this group of plants is in here. Another plant that I like to keep in my chilly laundry room is my money tree, otherwise known as Pachyra aquatica. And money tree are known for loving humidity and moisture and warmth. They grow so fast, insanely fast. But the reason I like to keep it in the chillier laundry room climate pocket is because they actually struggle a lot with spider mites in winter months because mites love warmth and dry air i think always how can i get rid of pests how can i make their environment inhospitable in in an area that the pests won't want to live so the money tree goes in my chilly laundry room it can tolerate the temperatures the cold controls the growth keeps it a little bit more compact and the plant doesn't struggle as as much with spider mites. They're still there, but this is a great way to, to suppress those populations. So the last microclimate I want to discuss is actually, it may seem obvious, but it's the floor. And everybody's got this climate pocket. Floors are the coldest part of the house, and that's because heat rises. It's a fact of science, and it's something that we don't always think about. So the higher you get the plants, the warmer they're gonna be. But on the flip side, the higher you get the plants, the less light they're going to have. So there is this balance of keeping light levels nice, but also not keeping your plants cold. So if you can do anything, like even with these big plants like monsteras and money trees and plants that are really tall, if you can just get them even three inches off the floor with a trivet or a dolly, that's going to help your plants out a lot, specifically the root zones. We don't often think about the root zones in the interior because we're, we're thinking more about the ambient temperature around the leaves and what light is hitting the leaves. But the root zone is really important to keep a good temperature because 
if your roots are staying too cold and they're damp, then they're more susceptible to root decay. So make sure that uh, you're trying to keep your plants off the floor at least during these really uh, cold Arctic blasts. Okay, so that's what I've got for you today in this episode. I hope that uh, this gives you some insight into the climate pockets in your own homes, helps you to find places to uh, keep your plants healthy this winter, healthy and warm. And on that note, I hope that you all stay safe, stay warm, and have a very Merry Christmas this season. I will see you in the new year.